Welcome to the third part of the lecture on generative modeling. In this part, I will be treating GANs, or as I like to think of them, frenemies. So over here, I show an overview of what a GAN looks like. On top, I show the generator, which takes a latent code Z, which is random noise, and generates fake data using that latent noise. We will then intermingle this fake data between real data and show it to a discriminator network. And this discriminator network is going to classify images as either real or fake. And now we can see how these two networks are adversaries of each other. The discriminator is doing its best to find the fake generated data, while the generator is trying to hide the data as best as it can between the input data. So training a GAN is actually fairly straightforward. We draw one sample of Z, or maybe more if we have a larger batch size, and we generate a fake output, X fake. Then the loss of the generator actually de depends on the discriminator here. And we train with a binary cross entropy, but with the wrong label we try to actually make it so that the discriminator thinks the label is actually real. And then we update phi, so the parameters of the generator, based on this loss function. Then in the second step, we also get an example from the real data set. And we create a second loss function. Now, also with binary cross entropy for the fake and real data, but now with the correct labels. So for fake should be zero, and for real should be one. And then we update the parameters of the discriminator using this loss. And now we can see how these two losses are actually competing with each other. Now, during backprop, the way this works is in the first step, we have to backpropagate both through the discriminator as well as the generator, right? We need these partial derivatives all the way back to Z. But we only update phi. We only update the generator using this loss function. Because if we were to update the discriminator, right, we would be going in the wrong direction for the discriminator. And then in the second step, we actually only need to backprop through the discriminator. And we end at both the fake data and the real data. And then we update the parameters theta. And we constantly go back and forth between updating the generator and the discriminator. And if everything works out well, over time, you will see that the generated fake data will become better and better and better as both the discriminator gets stronger as well as the generator. So the intuition behind this is that the discriminator learns what does and what does not fit inside of the probability distribution P of X. And the generator tries to oppose this, right? So it will need to mimic P of X as close as possible if it wants to hide between the real examples. Now, important here is that the generator and discriminator need to be as strong as each other. If one is way stronger than the other, it's clear to see that you run into all kinds of issues. One of the most common issues with guns is actually mode collapse. So mode collapse is an annoying local minimum that happens uh, when the generator, even though it gets different random latent codes here always outputs the same fake data. And this happens if it gets stuck in a local minimum where it doesn't really know how to get out of. And usually these images then look very similar to one of the uh, examples already in the training set. So there are all kinds of ways to deal with this. I would say research them yourself if you want to work on guns uh, because they are outside the scope of this introductory lecture. Now, GANs can actually give very good, although slightly creepy results. So here I show some examples of the website thispersondoesnotexist.com, which is actually a great website. I really recommend going there. And this is some examples given by the NVIDIA style GAN. And really, these are some very believable, true to life pictures. But what you often see uh, happening as well is that the background is actually off, right? This background is warped here and there are strange things here on the left and right which are slightly creepy in my opinion. 
um, but these are artifacts. Most of the images are actually very, very good. So these are guns. In the next part, I will be talking about normalizing flows.